It's hate speech that incites people to violence. And your point is so right. Uh, I mean, how can they dare claim the free speech argument when these university campus campuses regularly shout down or cancel other speakers? People as harmless as Jordan Peterson, for instance, are often uh, uh, protested or, or barred from, from campuses. It is absurd. But let's have a listen to Liz McGill trying to explain this situation away in those terms. In that moment, I was focused on our university's longstanding policies aligned with the U.S. Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. These policies need to be clarified and evaluated. Well, there you go. She's gone, of course, Kristen, but she's not the only one. In those hearings, there were other university leaders who seemed to justify this sort of behaviour, and it's rampant across the university, the college system in the US. Yes, the presidents of Harvard and MIT are also facing a lot of heat right now for this. Um, and, you know, here's what I have to say to the donors, the donors who are all of a sudden outraged by this and, and demanding that these presidents resign. Hey, donors, it was your money for decades that has, has created the environments that are now friendly to this kind of pro-Hamas speech that does incite violence. Where have you been for the last decade or two uh, when the these college campuses that are being propped up with your money have been transformed into these places that truly are not tolerant of all free speech, not tolerant of all ideas, and hotbeds for hate against certain groups, which absolutely does include Jewish students. So this is a monster that these donors have created. And, you know, I'm glad that they finally come to the realization that these college campuses are not as great as they once thought they were, but, but they are the ones who have been funding all of this. Yeah, this is no surprise. This has been a long time coming. Also, no surprises are about the ongoing crisis on the US southern border. Here's a latest news snippet from Fox News. The migrant surge keeps escalating, so many crossing that border. Patrol officials say they're releasing now 5,000 migrants into the U.S. every day. Well, let me take you right to some footage we shot on the drone a little earlier of a group that came right up behind me. You've got more than four to 500 migrants coming here. Most of the ones here are from Venezuela, Guatemala, Honduras, Ecuador, Colombia. Kristen, you've been hot on this. It's not getting any better. Of course not, but unfortunately, these numbers, which are truly shocking, have lost their shock value because now every week, every month, we're hearing these numbers like 5,000 a day, and after a while, it just loses its shock value and people start to tune out, but they really shouldn't because we are losing our country, Chris. I want to remind people that during the Obama administration, 1,000 migrants a day was considered a crisis. I mean, we are way beyond that now. Uh, and, and there just seems to be a total apathy surrounding this issue. I mean, the news media, the news media here in America barely ever talks about immigration. So should Trump become the nominee, as it seems he will, I, I hope he starts banging the drum on this issue again like he was back in 2016. And he mm -hmm. really does need to be more aggressive this time about building a wall if he is elected to the presidency yeah. again. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's important for the country and it's politically beneficial. There's there's no doubt about it. Uh, the public are, are not going to like the, the poorest borders uh, in the south of uh, the US. Now, uh, just quickly, I want to check in on the president. It's hard to keep up with all of these gaffes. Let's look at the, the latest two. Here he is trying to explain how much money is being spent on infrastructure. Over a billion, three hundred million, trillion, three hundred million dollars. Over a billion, three hundred million, trillion, three hundred million dollars. Billion, trillion, million, nobody knows actually what figure he was trying to recount there. And this one's even sadder because this relates to the horrors that are being un, uh, been unfolding in Israel. And it's 65 days he was referring to, supposed to be referring to, since the Hamas atrocity in southern Israel on October the 7th. But listen to how he expresses this. But we know this year's Hanukkah is different. It's been 65 years since the deadliest day of the Jewish people since the Holocaust. 65 years. 65 years ago, Kristen. Yeah, you know, when I first saw that first clip, the billion million clip, I was on Twitter just kind of scrolling and I saw it and I thought, man, he must be talking about the amount of money we've sent to Ukraine. <laughs> and then I realized, <laughs> oh no, this is just another day, another gaffe uh, with this pathetic president who's, uh, you know, 
uh, truly just losing his marbles. I mean, this man is not capable of doing the job, which is why I've totally come around to your uh, to your prediction, Chris, that he will not be the nominee. The Democrats can't allow this because uh, it's terrifying. The world is up in flames. We've got several wars that have broken out during his presidency, and he is totally unable to to deal with this and to lead the free world. It's it's truly scary. It sure is, uh, Kristen. Uh, thanks for talking to us. Uh, we'll catch up with you next week.